Welcome to the Unapologetic Man Podcast. The only podcast that's all about self-improvement, confidence, success, women, and being a man without making any apologies for it. What is up, ya absolute champions? Thank you for tuning in to yet another groundbreaking episode of the Uniform Mike Papa, the Unapologetic Man podcast. And today, we are going to talk about the V-Cut protocol to get every single girl you meet attracted to you. Let me ask you a question. Let's say you have a girlfriend, somebody who you cannot get romantically involved with because of certain situations. Is it a good thing, yes or no, that that girl is attracted to you? Now, obviously, there are certain situations that we can't predict when it comes to this, but generally speaking, what you want is every single girl, every single woman, every single person you meet who's female to be attracted to you. And we're going to talk about how to get that today and why it is so important with, again, what's called the V-Cut Protocol. Gentlemen, before we jump into the content, I have some really important announcements, so just bear with me. I'm going to try to get through these within a couple minutes, and then we'll jump into this all-important protocol. First of all, this Saturday, January 6, 2024, kicks off Monster Energy Supercross. Some of you know who have been listening for quite some time that I'm really into Supercross. It's basically dirt bike racing in stadiums, in my opinion, the sickest, the most badass, the most entertaining sport you could ever watch in your life beyond anything else. And I know a lot of you guys are fans of NFL, fans of Major League Baseball, NBA, whatever it might be. This, in my opinion, is the sickest thing you will ever see in your life, especially what's called Anaheim One. It's taking place in Anaheim, California at Angel Stadium. Anaheim One is the most anticipated Supercross race in the entire season. This is by far the most badass race. All the spectacle, all the anticipation. You have the entire field who's healthy, and this year's field is absolutely freaking stacked. Don't even get me started. Here's what I want you to do. A lot of you guys have Peacock. Peacock, of course, is an app like YouTube, Amazon Prime, Netflix. Peacock has live broadcasting of Monster Energy Supercross every Saturday for the next several months. So check it out. And it also has recordings of it. So if you're kind of interested in checking out the sport, I strongly suggest it. I will be watching every single race several times and I'm going to be at the race at Denver. And there's actually a guy who's really high up in this Supercross industry who gets me like backstage. I get to meet all the riders. I get to check out the bikes, walk the track. It's so fucking dope, man. It's almost the biggest gift that this podcast has ever given me. So check it out. I really want to help the sport. I want to grow it. And the more people who watch it, the more people who help it. That being said, I was wondering if you guys could help me with something in this podcast. I had a champion write me the other day. His name is Steven C. What is up, Steven? Fucking legend. And he's like, hey, bro, I really want to help you out. Would it help you if I went to Spotify and left comments on as many episodes as possible? And I was like, fuck, dude, it's a great idea. I never thought of that. So if you guys are listening on Spotify, and I know a lot of you guys are, actually the majority of you guys are, I'd really, really appreciate it if you could go to as many episodes as you can stomach and leave reviews, comments, just basically what you thought of the episode. Obviously, something positive is more preferable to something negative. But if you guys want to help me, if you feel like I've been giving you value and you're like, dude, I really want to help this guy, but I don't know how to do it. That's what you can do. Go to Spotify. It says, what did you think of this episode? It's a question that I put with every episode. And if you answer that and do that with multiple episodes, it's going to increase my visibility in the search rankings, make other people find me and grow the podcast. In addition to that, if you're on iTunes or any other app and you can leave a comment, leave a review, leave a five stars, email me at coachmarksing at gmail.com. I will send you a bunch of cool shit, including the conversation sniper, guide to the female orgasm, three texts to make her massively attracted to you, as well as a couple videos. I'll smack you upside the head and I'll get your name tattooed right on my butthole. So do it on Spotify, do it on iTunes. If you do anything, even just leaving me one comment, email me, bro. Coachmarksing at gmail.com. I will reply to you personally and say, hey, thank you so much. Here's some programs. Here's some videos. Here's a fucking tattoo of your face on my butt cheek because you're a goddamn legend. So again, boys, Spotify, if you could please leave comments on as many 
episodes as you can possibly handle, I will really appreciate it, man. Seriously, if you want to help me, that is literally the best thing you can do. All right, guys, let's get into the V-Cut protocol. So what is this V-Cut? It's based on what I call the four pillars of attraction. Now, in the previous episode, I talked about how this year, 2024, I want to kick it off by going over some of the foundational elements of my coaching, and that includes the all-important four pillars of attraction. These four pillars of attraction go into what I call the V-Cut protocol, which I'm going to explain in a second. The four pillars of attraction are necessary for you to take off both in your first conversation as well as the first date in order to get her attracted to you. So it's a protocol, it's a framework. And if you use this, your fortune is mine for the telling. You are going to get laid, brother. You're gonna stop eating Fritos out of your belly button on a Friday night and actually get your dick wet. Yes, outside of the shower. Because I know a lot of you guys only get your dick wet in the shower. This is going to allow you to get that success. The four pillars of attraction are frame control. Number two is value. Number three is sexual attention. And number four is qualifying. When we go into conversations, you obviously have to have frame control. What is frame control? It's leading the conversation, being unaffected by her, not caring what happens. If she checks you, says something bitchy to you, or tests you in any way whatsoever, there's certain ways to pass those tests. And it's basically letting her know it's your way or the highway. Now, obviously, I don't have enough time to go into really deep detail on frame control. If you want to know anything about it, just search my name, Mark Singh, plus frame control. And I suggest listening to every single episode with frame control in the title, as a lot of you champions have already done. So we're not going to go too deep into it, but it is the most important thing to get a woman attracted to you. And hear me when I say this, bro tendo. If you don't control the frame in a conversation with the woman, she cannot get attracted to you. So it is the most important thing, and that's why it's the first of four pillars. Frame motherfucking control. You have to have that down. And by the way, that also includes the tone of your voice. And what's it all derived on? Just like I talked about in the last episode, your thoughts, belief systems, metaprograms, and archetypes that start inside your head. So if you want to lead the frame with the woman, which is the most important thing to do, you have to have beliefs that back up a strong frame, thus getting her more attracted to you. And that's why I use NLP in my coaching. NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming. We remap all the stuff that has to be remapped in order to make women attracted to you. You get strong belief systems, confidence, and a strong frame, thus getting women attracted to you like you've never experienced before. So unless you want a girl that looks like a face transplant recipient from a canyon mule, I highly suggest you get frame control down pat because it is that important. The second pillar of attraction is what? That's right, value. Now, you guys have probably heard value many times, both in my podcast as well as other podcasts, and it's funny. Have you ever seen that show, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Well, there's this one episode where the character Dennis comes up with a seduction method and one of the things that he talks about is displaying value, displaying these things that make women attracted to you, which he got correct. The thing is so funny. You got to look it up. It's called the Dennis Method. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. One of the funniest episodes I've ever seen. And of course, as a dating coach, that one particularly, I absolutely loved. So the first D in the Dennis system is demonstrate value, which is true. Value is being funny being entertaining, showing confidence, showing ambition, showing passion, showing her you're not to be fucked with, showing her, of course, that you have a stronger frame than she does, running gambits such as the cube, messages in water, the pig, things like handwriting analysis, analyzing her personality, reading her anal chakra and predicting her future. All these things that women are really into get them attracted to you, and this is giving value. One of the big pillars of giving value, because value in itself has different pillars, is storytelling. Telling stories that not only show you have a kick-ass life, show that you're brave and ambitious, while at the same time being slightly self-deprecating, so it doesn't look like you're bragging, but also showing her that you have pre-selection, other women in your life. So all these things come together to create value. Now, here's a question for you. Do we, in the Mark Singh protocol of approaching and attracting women, hit on women in this program? No, we do not. Not until they are attracted to you. 
The big problem with a lot of guys is they go in sexual before she's ready to be sexual. Another extremely important fundamental that I really want you to understand when it comes to seducing women, my way, which in my opinion is the correct way, based on tens of thousands of experiences of my own as well as my clients, the way to do it is not to hit on her until she's attracted to you. Don't hit on the girl until she's attracted to you. So this is where the V cut comes in. Now this part right here is gonna be a little bit difficult to explain to you guys on audio, but I'm gonna do my best. Remember that we come in peace kind of hand signal like that they do on Star Trek where your index finger is connected to your middle finger and then there's a space between your middle finger and your ring finger, which is connected to your pinky. God, that was hard to explain. Kind of like we come in peace, please do not kill us. It's kind of like that hand signal. You guys remember that. That's the V cut protocol. And it's based on the four pillars of attraction. I know some of you guys are a little thick headed. So try to stick with me here. Okay. So hold up four fingers. That's the four pillars of attraction. Let's review them. Frame control, value, sexual tension, and qualifying. Now do that. We come in peace thing where Two fingers are stuck together, there's a space between them, and then the other two fingers are stuck together. If you're watching on video, it's a lot easier to see this, but I'm sure even you thick-headed champions out there have got it now. So this is the four pillars of attraction in the V-cut protocol. And the reason I do this is because I want space between going sexual with her, qualifying her, and what we do in the beginning, which is value and frame control. Why do I want space there? Because the space is there to remind us that we only go on the last two pillars of attraction once she's attracted. And this is what's cool about my program is I don't tell my guys to go in and hit on girls. Because when you do that, not only can you get rejected, but it's also a little bit creepy. If a girl isn't sexually attracted to you and you try to go sexual with her, you're so beautiful, I want to kiss you, what would it be like to have sex together? Like saying shit like that, which guys will do straight up. And any women listening are nodding their heads fervently right now. If you go sexual too soon before she's attracted, it's going to creep her the fuck out. So what we do is we drop value and frame control on all women, including our girlfriends including girls who we work with, including our friend's moms, my girlfriend's mom, I do this too. I do it to everybody. It's just who I am. I always have frame control. I always give value. I'm interesting to talk to. I make them laugh. I tell funny stories. I'm charismatic as fuck. I'm dropping charisma bombs like a C-130 charisma gunship on the motherfucker, and they can't help but get attracted to me, which goes back to my original question. Is it a good or a bad thing for pretty much every woman in your life to be attracted to you? Most of the time, it's a good thing. The problem happens when you go between the space and then you start taking it sexual, you act on it perhaps, and you have sex with her, and you start qualifying her too much, making her work for you, which I'm going to talk about at the end, so stay tuned until then. So to reiterate, we have the four pillars of attraction. Okay, I'm going to go over it many times because like I said, I know a lot of y'all half asleep right now, probably multitasking. So it's good for me to repeat this stuff sometimes. Four pillars of attraction are frame control, value. Then once she's attracted, and I really want to reiterate that once she's attracted, we can go to sexual tension and qualifying. Now, how do we know when she's attracted? Signs of attraction, bro, amigo. Think about it, Theodore Roosevelt. She's laughing at jokes that aren't funny. She's touching you. She's playing with their hair. Like girls will sit there kind of like stroking their hair like a freaking gorilla. And it actually is a primate instinctual activity that women do when they're attracted to you, as well as scratching the inside of their wrist is a big primate thing that they'll do. Asking you personal questions, laughing at anything. You could just be like, ooh, ooh, and like poking the arm. And she's like, he fucking attracted. So we look for those signs of attraction and only if we want to, if we want to pursue something sexual with her, do we go into sexual tension and qualifying. So we always use on every single woman, frame control and value. I'm not hitting on her if I tell a story about how I was surfing with my friend. He thinks he hit a shark and fell off his surfboard and I had a paddle out there as I was peeing all over myself because I was so scared. And then we went in and we were like on the beach, like, dude, I can't believe it. If I tell that story, it shows high value attractive traits, but I'm not hitting on her, am I? 
And that's the whole point is rejection is significantly reduced when you go in with this innocuous approach of just, hey, I'm a fun-loving guy. I'm talking to you because you look interesting. I'm not necessarily interested in you. I'm interested in the conversation. I talk to everybody. Let's see what you got. This is why I oftentimes say, hey, I wanted to meet you and see if you were interesting. Let's see what you can bring to this conversation. Am I hitting on her? No, I don't know this chick. I'm interested to talk to her to see if I am going to be attracted to her. But in the beginning, boys, we don't telegraph attraction. We telegraph interest. Interest in what? Interest in the conversation. If I'm not going to talk to you, I'm going to talk to somebody else. And if they don't want to talk to me, I'm going to talk to somebody else. And this too is why guys who are really good with women, it's almost like they're self-entertained and it doesn't matter who they're talking to. And this works perfectly into the V cut. The first two parts of that V are simply frame control and value. I'm going to frame control you. If you try to test me, you're getting it thrown back in your face. I had a girl tell me the other day, I believe I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, but she said this perfect thing and I was so pumped she said it because I rarely get frame checked anymore because my frame is usually not in question. When a girl questions your frame, she's going to check it. So I was showing this girl some pictures in my new house. Marissa and I were standing out in front of it and I got legs that are so long. It's like my belly button is between my two pecs. And it's funny because I actually used to say that to kids in Japan when they'd ask me, Mark Sensei, where's your belly button? And I would point between my two pecs and it would always make them laugh. So I got these long ass fucking legs and my waist is like a mile high and my pants always look like they're too high when I'm wearing them around my waist when you're wearing a suit. So I'm wearing a suit and she's like, your pants are too high. And I reframed it on her by saying, stop staring at my crotch. And that's a misinterpretation. I misinterpreted what she said. She's questioning my style, but I misinterpreted to say that she's sexually attracted to me as she's staring at my crotch. So I'm always doing frame control. Somebody tests me, I'm throwing it back at them, right? They say, why are you wearing flip-flops to this bar where everybody else is wearing shoes? I'll be like, the real question is, why are you staring at my legs? So it's always all about the other. You flip it on them. Your reality cannot be questioned because you're so ensconced and confident in who you are. Then as I'm talking to her, showing her that I'm leading the conversation not to be fucked with, if she brings up something boring, I'm changing the topic. She brings up like pro-choice or pro-life and I'm just like whatever and I change the topic plowing through her social unintelligence that shows frame. Meanwhile, giving value, telling a story, doing a gambit, challenging her, role-playing with her, doing hypo stories, hypothetical stories with her, push-pull, cold reading. Do you guys know what cold reading is? It's very simple. You tell her one side of her is one way, the other side of her is the other way. I can tell, Kelly, that you have this whole like tough girl thing going on. You're not to be fucked with. You're going to just blow guys out left and right because you've been picked up so many times you're starting to grow handles. But I bet, Kelly, deep inside of who you are, you're the sweetest, most caring friend a girl could have. I bet you're probably the best friend to your best friend and you do anything for her, wouldn't you? She's like, oh yeah, this guy understands me. That's value. Am I hitting on her by saying that? No, I'm just giving value. And we could do this with everybody. Yes, even your best friend's girlfriend, who it's okay if she's a little bit attracted to you. Here's why. If you have many women in your life attracted to you and you go out with those women, which you probably will, you go to the supermarket, go to nightclubs, go to Jamba Juice, fucking Starbucks, wherever, other girls can pick up on the fact that that girl is attracted to you. And attraction for a woman isn't always sexual. And I know this sounds weird, but bear with me. Attraction for a woman can just be like, I feel good around him. I like him. I just feel drawn to him. I don't want to necessarily have sex with him. In the example of your best friend's girlfriend, she might not necessarily want to have sex with you, but she just feels good around you because you're charismatic. You're controlling the frame. You're giving value, but you're not hitting on her. You're not going sexual, which of course is the third pillar of attraction. It is over here. And we only go there when in the middle of the V, and if it helps you to visualize this, you can look at it as a V for vagina, kind of helps some of my guys to think that way. Only when in the middle of the V do we get three, at least three clear signs of attraction, do we take it sexual. Now, taking it sexual is extremely easy. I've given you guys many examples in the past, one of which is, why don't you have a boyfriend? I bet it's because you're a bad kisser. Another one I like to use is, so hey, Kelly, what's your sign? 
Now, we as men, when we hear shit like, what's your sign, astrology, are you like a Cancer or a Pisces or Aquarius, we go through more pain in our being talking about that shit than Ron Jeremy in a midget colony doing anal on all those poor fucking midgets going through that extreme pain. That's how painful it is. Ron Jeremy in a midget colony. And he's not allowed to go regular. He's got to go anal, boys. And those fucking midgets, their buttholes are killing them. That's how much it pains us to talk about this shit. But it works. So one way to go sexual is to say, so hey, what's your sign? She says, oh, I'm a Pisces or a Cancer or whatever she says. And then you say, oh, my God, that sucks. And she's like, why does that suck? And you say, because I'm an Aquarius or Cancer or Pisces, whatever you are. And Pisces and Aquariuses do not get along. Like if we went out to dinner, it would be an immediate food fight. I'd be spraying ketchup in your hair. You'd be slanging pickles at my forehead. And I'd have to walk home with a pickle hanging off my eyebrow. Too much trauma. And she laughs, okay? You're just kidding. You're just messing around. But then you say, but you know what one good thing between Pisces and Aquarius is? is? And she's like, what? And you say, well, and I don't know if I should tell you this. Kind of as you look around like over your shoulder, like it's a secret. You say, apparently the chemistry between them is really intense really intense. Like if we ever kissed, which of course it will never happen because we just don't get along. But if we ever kissed, it would be like immediate fireworks, just a nuclear explosion of passion definitely cannot happen. Now she's getting interested. Then you can talk about kissing. And then now you're getting sexual. Now the fourth pillar of attraction is qualifying, making her work for you. I told you I would talk about this last because this one is a little bit of a floater. It's kind of floating out there. You can sometimes throw it over into the conversation on the other two pillars where let's say you're doing frame control and value. She's getting really into it. You're getting signs of attraction. You can toss it in there without having to go sexual because all it is is making her work for you. Let me ask you a question. Yes, you the listener. I know you're fading, so I'm bringing you back in. Pay attention. Why is it a good thing to have somebody sell themselves to you? Why is that a good thing? You're right. You're a smart motherfucker. Check out the brain on you. It's because when you sell yourself to somebody, you're convincing yourself that you like them more than you actually like them. So if I sell myself to you, if I'm like, dude, I'm a great coach. I have like over 250 reviews on my website, including all those video testimonials. Come on, man. I swear I'll be great. I swear we're going to get you success. I am going to 10x your results and I really need you to believe me. If I sell myself to you, which kind of funny enough, I do in every episode because you have to, right? I'm a marketer. I got to fucking sell my shit. But if I'm like really trying to sell it to you, I'm convincing myself that I want you more in my program than I might actually want you. And this too is why I say, hey, I have more applicants than spots available. If you're not into it, then cool, man. Like we can part ways as friends. It's not a big deal. I don't get butt hurt when guys don't move forward for whatever reason. Between you and me, I think they're kind of stupid not to move forward, but I don't get butt hurt about it. And that's because I have a strong frame. I have a strong belief in myself. But if I were insecure, I would get butt hurt about it. But the point is, When you try to sell yourself to somebody, you're actually wanting what they offer more than you would if you didn't sell yourself to them. So the classic question that I ask girls, and this is the fourth pillar of attraction, is what would your best friend say is the coolest thing about you? But lately, I've been saying, so hey, do you know why you're awesome? And she's like, why? And I say, it was a question, dum-dum. And then she laughs and she says, well, I'm awesome because of this, that, and the third. Now she's explaining herself to me, thus getting more attracted to me. So let's look at the four pillars of attraction again. Like I said, I'm repeating myself so you guys can get this. Number one, frame control. Number two, value. Once we get three signs of attraction, we go into sexual tension. Give you two really good examples. And then we also go into qualifying. We go into qualifying. I'm actually going to do an episode about how to dominate speed dating events. I'm really excited about this. And we're going to work in the four pillars of attraction in a two-minute conversation. However much time they give you, I will get that shit in there. And it will be the best conversation she's had all night with all these other schleps who are like, yeah, so I like to like walk on the beach with the sweater tied around my neck and I love Call of Duty. And they end up with a girl who they have to roll over twice just to get off of her once they've had sex with her. We don't want to be that dude. We need to infuse those four pillars of attraction. Again, frame control, value, sexual attention, qualifying. If you get that, into your conversations with women, they will get attracted to you and only on your terms do you take it sexual. 
Why again is having lots of girls attracted to you a good thing? Because everywhere you go, other women pick up on that. Women want what women want. And what that means is if you're wanted by women, more women are going to want you. This is so important that I want you guys to get as many women as possible attracted to you. I want you guys to use the first two pillars of attraction on everybody. Yes, even your girlfriend's mom, as I do, not because I'm trying to like game her. It's just who I am. I'm just giving value. I'm controlling the frame. I actually do it in this podcast. I give value. I control the frame. I lead the shit. I'm not like, oh, insecure about it. I'm like, motherfuckers, this is what we're talking about. You're going to love it. Trust me. You're going to dig this shit. And you guys do. And I'm giving value, giving you guys tons of shit to work with. And then with females particularly, once they're attracted, you can go into sexual tension. But not before, you idiots. Do not, under any circumstance, take it sexual until she's attracted to you. Here's a final concept I want to leave you with. Make sure to stay tuned until the end because this is really important. The final concept is this. While we lead the conversation, we lead the relationship, we lead pretty much everything, check this out. And this is a real mind fuck. It's based on her signals. So in a way, she leads it. And this is why I say lead women to where they want to be led because you don't execute on anything until the woman's ready. Other than approaching her, everything's on her terms. You wait until we get to the social hook point, which I'm going to do a podcast on soon too. You wait until she's attracted to go for her phone number. You wait until she's really jiving with you over text to go for the hangout. On the hangout, you wait until she's very attracted to you to kiss her. When you're kissing her, you wait until she's ready to get her titty rubbed until you rub them titties. What's the best way to rub a titty? Do you just eh, up and grab it? Fuck no. First, you go over it with your hand like a pass by like Tom Cruise flying past the tower on Top Gun. That's how you grab a titty. You don't just grab it. You do a flyby. So it's all based on her, which is interesting because while I say the man is the masculine presence, he leads, but we only execute when she's ready. Thus, the V-cut protocol. We only go into sexual tension and qualifying once we have that V level of attraction, three signs of attraction. So gentlemen, I want you to get this right in your head. You can run game on anybody, but only take it sexual with girls who are attracted to you and who you want to go sexual with. I love it that all my girlfriends are attracted to me because I'm always charismatic. I'm always funny. I'm always telling funny stories. It's just who I am because of practice and it's going to be who you are too. I'm always controlling the frame. I'm always leading them, showing ambition, confidence, passion, showing I don't give a shit what they think. So of course they're going to become attracted to me. But do I go sexual with them? Not really. Maybe sometimes jokingly because we're all close, but I only go sexual with girls who I want to get sexual with. So every girl's attracted to me, and that's the way you should think, by the way. Every single girl is attracted to you. That's what I want your new mentality to be. Even if you feel like you're lying to yourself, that's what you need to tell yourself. So every girl's attracted to me, but I only go sexual with the ones who I want to go sexual with. So that's the V-cut protocol, gentlemen. I hope it's helped you out again. If you guys could please leave tons of comments on my Spotify episodes, I will get your name tattooed right on my anal chakra and I will get a life-size statue of you in my backyard with Lay Champion chiseled in the granite beneath your feet. I thank you gentlemen profusely for listening to the podcast. I especially thank those who write me, who come into my program. You guys are fucking tippity top in my eyes. Every time I get a new application, I'm just like, dude, this guy's a fucking legend. I read it. I like look at your name and I repeat it. And I'm like, hell yeah, dude. Like Brian Armstrong. I'm just like, dude, what a legend. How much courage does it take to apply? And no, I'm not trying to use some psychology trick on you. I really feel that way. And I care about my brothers fighting shoulder to shoulder with me in the trenches because it takes a certain kind of motherfucker to come into a program like this. A guy with ironclad cojones, a guy who faces his fear, gets over the feminine traits of procrastination, flaking, and putting shit down the road to pull the fucking trigger, apply to something like this, and start his 2024 the way he should, like a fucking man does. If you want to be that guy, apply. I'm going to hit you up personally. We're going to email back and forth. And if it makes sense, you're going to get on that free one-on-one breakthrough session. And we'll see if you're a good fit for the program. Gentlemen, I do appreciate you listening. I will see you in the next episode.